On this episode of Eat, Sleep, Drive, we get a lesson in depreciation and we review one of the best enthusiast focused cars you can buy for under 10 grand. Let's start with depreciation in BMWs. Depending on which side of the coin you're on dictates whether it's the best or the worst thing. If you are fortunate enough to be able to afford a BMW new, that's awesome, they're fantastic cars, everything's great. But the depreciation on them is serious the second you even drive them off the lot. So consider this, a 2007, Toyota Camry around $20,000 new is Kelly Blue booking for around $7,000 give or take with similar mileage to this car this car was $40,000 new and guess what it blue books for now $7,000 so I could have a BMW 328i or I could have a Toyota Camry hmm $7,000 compared to the $40,000 new that's about one sixth of the cost. Now, the whole car is still here. It's not one sixth of a car, I can tell you that much. But let's go back to our depreciation discussion. If you're someone like me who can't afford a BMW new, but you really enjoy the cars for their dynamics and their performance and things like that, then the depreciation on them is fantastic because you can buy one used for a fraction of the cost of new and they suddenly become relatively affordable. So it really depends on your perspective. But let's take depreciation out of the equation, cost of ownership and all those things and just to review the car for what it is. The most impressive piece about an E90 BMW, as I get a little tail happy there on that, uh, that corner, is the steering and the chassis dynamics. The steering has absolutely everything that you would want. It has feel, it has a perfect amount of weight, it has a fantastic ratio. It's everything, everything, everything you want. It's so precise, it feels telepathic. And what you get from that is a very enjoyable driving experience because the more in tune you are with the car, and there's only so many tactile points you get with a car, right? The feeling in your seat, you get the feeling on the pedals and you get the steering wheel. These are, this is where you interact with the car. And certainly the steering wheel is, the, of up, is of utmost importance. And this car absolutely nails it. Now, how about the engine? This car makes around 230 horsepower, but they're German horsepower. And I would say it's probably closer to the wheels than most cars that would advertise 230 horsepower. It's adequate, it's certainly not fast, runs around a 14 something quarter mile. So it's not fast, but like I said, it is adequate. And what this engine lacks in horsepower, it absolutely makes up in how smooth it is. Like we're just doing a pull here, and first of all, the gearing in this car is so long. Oh, I mean, it's, I would say smooth as silk, but I think that's, that's incorrect. I think silk manufacturers, they don't say smooth as silk. They say smooth as a BMW inline six. It makes a pretty good noise, uh, relatively quiet, super, super refined, just smooth, smooth, smooth fantastic engine
Now this car is an automatic and I do have mixed emotions on that. The reason I say that is in general, I much prefer manual transmissions. However, I'm not the biggest fan of BMW manuals. They have a weird feel for me and it's kind of hit or miss for some people. Some people love it, some people don't like it. In general, I don't really like BMW manuals. So this is an automatic, admittedly, but it's pretty good. It's certainly not a dual clutch or something of a newer caliber automatic that's lightning quick and everything like that, but it will hold a gear when you tell it to, like you can put it in sport mode and everything. This car has a sport package, and I can't understate how important that is for this car. E90s are great as they are, but I really like the little bit extra that you get with the sport package. First of all, these seats. These seats are fantastic. They're bolstered like perfect for me and they're actually adjustable so you can adjust the width width of the bolster um, but they're comfortable and they hold me in really well to the car which I think says a lot for this segment it's trying to be an enthusiast focused car but it also needs to be luxurious you know the seats are heated uh, and they're they're just great the sport package also comes with a sport suspension, which is a little bit firmer ride. Uh, I certainly prefer it to the standard. It also is a little bit lower than the standard suspension, so you get a little more of an aggressive look. It's a little more of an aggressive feel to it, but it's not overdone. And you know, BMW is one of the few manufacturers that I feel like can do that, can walk that line really well. It can be fun, but not punishing at the same time. Other things this car has are HID lights, which are super bright. I really like them. You know, uh, it's got little things like under the door handles, there's lights that come on at night when you press the key fob. Uh, it just has a nice presence about it. And I, the thing I can't comprehend and that I keep going back to is that this car is only worth $7,000. You could pick this up for so cheap and it is just so much, so much car. Now you might be saying, okay, yeah, it's $7,000 because everyone knows German cars, BMWs are so expensive to maintain and parts are very expensive and yada, yada, yada. There is a certain truth to that. This car isn't gonna be as reliable as a Toyota Camry, come on. Like, who would we be kidding? But when you think about what this delivers, you kind of have to expect those things. And at the same token, this N52 engine is actually known to be relatively reliable, especially for a BMW. It's a naturally aspirated straight six, and there's not a ton that goes wrong with these. You know, there's things like the electric water pump will for sure go bad. And uh, you know, by now, this generation of car, most people probably already replaced it. So if you pick one up now, it's probably already been sorted. Uh, things like oil leaks are pretty common amongst all BMWs gaskets for whatever reason BMW can't get gaskets right uh, but they tend to deteriorate and you have to replace but overall it's pretty reliable you know if you were looking at something like a 335 that would be a different story you're looking at a lot more complex certainly a faster car probably a little bit more fun but in something like a 328 you get 95% of that car for about half the money a 335 is gonna be about double the cost of this car. And yes, it's faster. Everyone wants turbo engine, that's pretty sweet. But do you wanna deal with the wastegate rattle, the turbos going bad, the high pressure fuel pump? These are all notable common problems with 335s that are only a matter of time and are very expensive to fix. In the end, a BMW E90 328i, especially with a sport package, is an interesting proposition. And the reason I say that is because I'm willing to call it an enthusiast car, despite the fact that it's not the fastest thing in the world. You know, typically an enthusiast car has to be so quick, right? But the thing with this car is if you're an enthusiast, you can appreciate the finer points of this car. And the biggest thing being 
the chassis and the steering and the handling. It's so well balanced that only someone who is a car enthusiast can appreciate this kind of thing. A regular driver will not appreciate this car for what it is. So as an enthusiast, I think you can appreciate this car for the dynamics and everything like that. But what makes this car special is how it can be so well-rounded. It can also be a luxury car and something that your wife or girlfriend will ride with you and they might not pick up on the finer points of the steering and the suspension and the you know the handling of what you enjoy but they just think of it as a nice luxury car it's still got a comfortable ride it's super refined like i said how smooth this engine is so you get this dual personality it's a very fun grown-up car